<sighs> so picture a flourishing apple tree filled with beautiful, juicy apples ready for the picking and the eating. For most people, the focus is on the fruit because that's what we want to consume without giving a whole lot of thought to the tree that produced it or the seed that produced the tree. And when we do expand our perspective, we realize that there can be no fruit without that tree source, and there can be no tree without that seed source. And so we might say, well, the seed is the source of the apple tree. But in truth, it's not even the seed. Rather, it is the intelligent life that created the seed and placed the pattern of the apple tree into that seed. That invisible, intelligent life is the real source of all material things. Derek Rydell, the author of The Abundance Project, which we're going to be exploring over these next several weeks, weeks writes that, as we understand that the fruit isn't the real source of itself, we discover the real wealth is in the inherent transformative process that turns the seed into a sapling and then into a tree and then that tree blossoms and as a result, we get the apple. And even after that fruit has been harvested, you know, we get, and there's this abundance, and now the tree is barren as it goes through the winter season. We don't see that tree as now useless. We don't just go cut them down, because we understand that that is a renewable cycle. And the farmers understand that as they water, and as they weed, and as they feed the roots of this tree, that it will, in due time, produce another crop of beautiful apples. And that same inherent process is alive within each of us. And when we discover how to water it, how to weed it, and how to feed it, we now have this renewable source, this inexhaustible source of abundant life that we can tap into. This is the underlying principle of true abundance. When our sole focus is on the fruit, is on the material demonstration, largely ignoring the roots or the process in which that material is formed, those material things will eventually wither and die. Life changes, everything transforms. And if we put our belief in that, if we believe that this outer symbol is our source, whatever it might be, then our experience of abundance becomes finite because there's only so much stuff. There's only so many apples that get produced. So if that's the source, then it's limited. And we're limited in how many of those we might be able to use as part of our own life experience. And this is ultimately what leads to the likelihood of struggle, of strive. We got to strive to get some more. Sometimes we fight over it because it's a limited resource. And in desperate times, perhaps even die to get it. Because it appears to be the very essence of our survival that material things, whether it be food or shelter or water, if we get down to the basics, that seems to be critical for our very survival. And when we find ourselves identifying with it as our source of good, we tend to get attached to it. We tend to grasp at those symbols. And when we move into that way of living and being, we actually deplete. It's like we step on the water hose, or it gets a kink in it, and that flow gets impeded in our lives. The reason is both simple and profound. 
If we believe that someone or something outside of us is our source, whether it's for happiness or for safety, then we have to give it our power. I want you to think about that. The minute we think that's where my good lies, we give it power over us because we find ourselves sort of contouring who we are in order to bring it in to our world or to hold on to it. We will do whatever it has to do because that's the source of our good. The fear of losing it, losing it tends to make us do crazy things because it's the source of our good. It drives that personality, our ego part, to manipulate even when we don't really find that as a something that we want to do we just it happens automatically because it's important that we hold on to it and it is often this very thing the source of fear the source of guilt the source of shame because we found ourselves out there trying to hold on to whatever's out there. Any time that we make someone or something outside of ourselves the source of our supply, I want you to hear this, the universe sets us up to fail. The great reversal, as the author calls it, is the realization that everything with, is within us, that life is in us. Life flows from us, not to us. And the world has nothing to give us except for feedback and an opportunity to express it out into the world. And most importantly, it makes it almost impossible to show up authentically. To be the person that we've come here to be, that we were created to be, to share the gifts that we have said yes to sharing in our life's purpose. God doesn't set us up to fail because he's angry at us or she's feeling mean and vindictive or some other human attachment that we might put to this. When we understand that the source of abundance is spiritual, it is experienced as energy and it is governed by spiritual laws. So if we're out of alignment with the laws, it's not gonna work the way we want it to work. Our Unity co-founder, Charles Fillmore, calls this spiritual law around abundance the law of mind action. In popular culture, sometimes it's called the law of attraction. And it is one of our core principles. It's our third principle that says that we create our experiences through, the, through our way of thinking and feeling and believing. So it's all what's happening in here that creates the experience of what's going on outside of ourselves. Charles described it this way. He says, it is the law of spirit that we must be, no, it is the law of spirit that we must be that which we would have, that which we would draw to us. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we would draw love to us, then we must be loving and kind. If we would be peace and harmony in our environment, then we must first establish it within ourselves. This is the way the spiritual law works. It is from the inside out, not when I get that, then I'll be happy. When this person is my partner, then I'll have love. That's the way our human mind wants to think about it, but it's just the opposite. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm ready for whatever ragweed, mold, all the things that are high in the outer environment. I know it's all within me, but sometimes we do get to experience it from our human perspective. Just in case anybody wanted to remind me that, I got it, I know it. <laughs> So this infinite source of abundance is that very life force of God within you. We can call, call it our Christ, our Christ essence, call it God, call it whatever you want. But it is the thing that 
animates you. It's the thing that animates everything, both material and spiritual. And it expresses as a result of your consciousness, of your own beliefs, your own thoughts, and your own feelings. And when we can understand this and we can get our beliefs and our thoughts and our feelings in alignment with what it is that we want to experience in our life, then we experience in a much more, it, it almost seems miraculous way, but it's really just, oh my gosh, we're in, we're in alignment and things just happen. Life just flows. Jesus described it this way to the Samaritan woman at the well when he came and was wanting a drink of water. And she tells him, no, he tells her that everyone who drinks well water, this well water, will get thirsty again. But no one who drinks the water that I give will ever be thirsty again. The water I give will become in that person a flowing fountain of eternal life. Water, as we know it from the outer world, is something that we have to renew regularly. This inner flow does it all on its own. So we're going to move into our time of meditation and see if we can tap into that flow. See if we can tap into those living waters within us. So as you just take a moment and kind of recenter yourselves, bring your attention inward. You might want to close your eyes if that helps just block out this outer world for a little while. And become aware of the breath just like that eternal flow of life, it is always flowing in our bodies. For as long as we are in this animated state, whether we're conscious of it or not, which is the vast majority of the time we're unconscious of it, the breath is always flowing. And in your mind's eye, in this, using this gift of imagination, place your attention on your feet. And imagine that there are roots growing out of the soles of your feet and those roots grow deep down into the earth, down through all the layers where there is a rich bounty of the essence of that living energy of God that that grounds us here, but also allows us to grow and branch out from it. And then draw that rich soil, that rich, pure water that's flowing underneath the layers that we can see. Draw it up into your heart area and just let it from there, just as the blood flows to every part of our being, let that energy flow throughout your entire body. And in this heart space, I invite you to bring to mind an area of your life where you desire a greater flow of abundance. It might be to have a a greater abundance of health or more loving relationships or those financial resources or perhaps it's just a clear sense of your purpose here. Bring it in to this rich flow of life. And imagine this happening, this being present, this wholeness in of, of body, this richness of love in all the relationships, money that flows easily and abundantly, a purpose that is clear, that is enlivening and exciting. Imagine that's happening right now. 
How, how are you feeling in the midst of that? Perhaps it's a feeling of freedom or a sense of safety, peace, empowerment, love. Breathe into that and let that feeling radiate, not just in your own body, but beyond into the area around you. And in this place of love and wisdom, allow yourself to be reminded, allow spirit to show you in a way that speaks to your mind and heart and soul that you are not just this body, this person, or all that you desire to come into your life is not your source. None of those people or places or events are your source. At best, they are a potential channel for your good. Everything that you could ever need is already within you. Just let that feeling of abundance flow and move and have its being in you. And just take a moment where we just rest, where we relax into, where we feel that sense of connectedness with it, with this divine flow. And as you turn on your inner ear, listen to that inner guidance as you ask, how can I start living from this flow of abundant living waters? What's one thing I can do in this moment that will open that tab? And as you begin to bring your attention back to this time and space, know that if that answer hasn't come immediately in this moment, as you stay aware and awake, it will seek you out through a conversation, a billboard sign, something you read. The universe is there to support you in this abundant living. It is who you have been created to be and to express. And as you wiggle your toes and fingers and come back into this body, whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. So there may be some of you thinking, well, you know, this sounds really good in theory. I like it. It'd be great if it was that. But, you know, I've got bills to pay. My rent is due. I've got this project that I'm not sure if I can figure out how to make it work. And if I don't, I might lose my job. Or my body is fighting some disease right now. You know, I need more than just this message in order to heal that. I need help right now. And I get it. You know, that's how our ego, our human mind responds to things. It wants something concrete, something that we can experience with our five senses. We want to see it to believe it. And the spiritual life says, when you believe it, you will see it. In truth, Whatever situations we're having and experiencing in our life are simply a reflection of where we get attached to outside things. Oh, I know. It's like, what? 
but it's true. When we want things to be a certain way, it tends to block our greater good and limits our experience of abundance. I'll tell you one quick example that's come up for me in the last week. So we're having our birthday banquet. It's in less than two weeks. So I'm, you know, Monday or Tuesday when I came in, it's like, oh, how many tickets did we sell? How many, you know, auction items have we gotten? Well, we're at 19 tickets sold. And yeah, there's some uh, auction items. And immediately, my, you know, I go to panic. You know, what? We're two weeks away. We've only sold this many tickets and blah, 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 blah. And we've, we've been working for months and planning and everyone's been putting all this time and effort in. And normally, you know, we're at least 60, maybe 80. And I went around and around on that merry-go-round for a little while. And then I finally had the epiphany. Okay, A, we do this every year. I do it every Sunday because I walk in here and there's four people sitting in the sanctuary. I'm thinking, okay, maybe nobody's coming today. You know, it's five till. And then by the time we sing and I get up and look, it's like, oh, there they are. They've showed up. So I have to remind, okay, this is, this is just the way this unfolds. For whatever reason, unity people don't tend to like to do it much advanced planning. You know, it's kind of a live in the moment, spur of the moment thing, and it all usually comes together. And then here's my second thing. But what if it doesn't this year? What if only 30 people decide to do this? What if people are sick of doing it? Then we won't do it anymore. So that's my message to you. We will become, so I had to become unattached to how this was going to look, how this was going to feel. We're going to do it. It'll be what it'll be. It'll be great, whatever it is. And we also have to look at the mirror. And maybe this is, maybe we need to be thinking about doing, we've been doing a birthday banquet in this church for, I don't know, 30, 40 years. Maybe it's time, maybe this is a reflection that it's time for something new. So the people of this community will make that decision and you'll make it by either showing up and we say yes, an abundance of people still want to do this or not and we'll, you can help us reinvent how we might want to celebrate within our community from year to year. So, I'll, you know what, it'll be what it'll be, and that's okay. And it doesn't, it's not a reflection, I don't take it personally, it's not a reflection of the people who have invested a lot of time and energy in it. We have to remember, we're doing this because we love it. Debbie Franz and Jessica, they are hard at work on centerpieces and decorate, and but they love. They've had a Pinterest board going for six months um, about wh how they were going to create all this. So as I reminded them, you know, whether it's 30 people or 80 people or 100 people, you're doing this because it fulfills some purpose and passion within you, some creative outlet. One of my favorite reminders comes from John Lennon. And it says this, and it was in the movie, um, uh, oh my Lord, it just went out. India, old folk home people, he always said this too. But, huh? The best marigold hotel, something like that. It says, everything will be okay in the end, and if it's not okay, it's not the end. Think about that. So our invitation this week is to notice where we are sourcing our abundance, especially in those areas that we seem to be experiencing lack, and to make a conscious decision to shift our attention from the fruit, from that outer, outer thing that we're hoping to have in our experience, to the divine roots that underlie it, and to invite those living waters to flow within us. The book here, just for your awareness, offers exercise. If you want to go deeper into this, it's great. It has a lot of exercise to support you. It has something called a 40-day abundance boot camp um, that kind of walks you through, you know, re-shifting mind and, and, and the way we look at things. And it will be a great guide for you. And it will help you understand and guide you to live in and live from and give in and trust God's inexhaustible flow of abundance. 
Well, this is our opportunity now to share of our financial good, that flow of abundance with our community. So let us take what we offer into our hands and into our hearts as we join together and bless it. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Father, Mother God. As we go into this day, into this week, living in that flow of abundance, we go knowing our prayer for protection. We're going to do it as a call and response. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Together, wherever we are, God is and all is well. Have a great week.